Good morning. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, young ones. This is the daily dynamite. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for bringing us to a new week. We thank you for bringing us to the first day of this week. Father, this third week of August is going to bring us favor, Lord. Father, we ask for your grace. As we want to look into your word today, being Sunday, Father, may your word be embedded in our lives. May your word be as a strong tower that we are going to run into. May your word be revealed in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Good morning and once again, welcome to today, being the 13th of August, Sunday. Topic, giving. Giving. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 31 to 46. Matthew chapter 25, from verse 31 to 46. Do you know do you now not know? Sorry, sorry. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. Mark that word. Take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. When the righteous we answer, then the righteous we answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty? and give you something to drink. When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you and go to visit you? Then the king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. Then oh, they also we answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty? Or a stranger or needing clothes or sick in prison or in prison and we did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our uncle verse is verse 35. Verse 35, which says, For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I was talking with someone today 
Okay, that should be okay. Yes, a few days ago. And this person is trying to tell me that giving is no more preached in our church because whenever you try to bring up this topic, whenever a preacher or a, the man of God starts to say something about giving, ah, watch the congregation. They will now fall into defense to wait for the man of God to run to land because they are thinking that this man is looking for their pockets. And the teaching of giving seems like it is bastardized in churches. And this person told me, that doesn't mean that the teaching of giving is not important. It is very important. The Lord in our text today, in his own words, said that the people that we are casted to the left as goats, people that we, are, that we be casted to the lake of fire, are those that are, he called them, there was a, there's a testimony that calls it, you workers of iniquity. He likens those that don't help, those that don't give out. He likened them to goats. He likened them to workers of iniquity. When you will see your friend in help and you do not help, when you see something that is, that is in need and you have the resources and the finances to help out and you refuse, it is counted to you as a work of iniquity. Giving. The Lord gave his only begotten son. Everything he had, he gave it. And he is even ready to give us more. It is out of his love. Now the question is, why is it that people find it very difficult to give these days? Because they don't love God. For God so loved the world in John 3, 16, that he gave. If the Lord, if God did not love the world, he will not give. If you love God, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear young ones, my fellow youths, if you love God, you are going to give to God. Your tithes and offerings that we are preaching every day, and we are telling you, give, give, that ah. Even the Bible, as it's saying, give and shall be given unto you. People are even using it to sing, but they still don't give. Another reason why people, why people is that why people refuse to give is that most times people will give, having the mentality that when they give, that the Lord is going to give them back the same thing, the same equation. Ah, are you didn't trade better with God? Are you doing a business with God? Are you doing Ponzi scheme, uh, Ponzi scheme with God that you will give God 1,000? God will bless you. Now, if we look at even that, if God is going to bless you from what you give, you that have been giving 15 naira every day as offering, you that have been giving $1 or $2 as offering every Sunday, no, let's check it. $1 times 10 is how much? It's $10. Times 100 is how much? $100. Your 15 naira or your 100 naira times 10 is how much? It's just 1,000 naira. If God is going to bless you in 10 foods, God is going to look upon that which you have given him to bless you. That means you're not giving enough. We need to give more. What are we to give? Our resources is one. Our finances is two. Our time. He gave us this life. You are going to give. You are, you are supposed. It is, so it is, uh, it is an, uh, a proper thing for you to give your life to him. Give your life first because Christ gave his life first to us. Then, from our passage today, he says that, I'm going to her anchor verse, he said that he was hungry. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. The previous verse, verse 34, says something that he will, he's going to tell these people that gave him food, that gave him water, and gave and took him, gave him shelter. He said that there is something that he will tell them in verse 34. That the, then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance. The kingdom prepared for you. Now, the inheritance of those 
the inheritance of those that give to God. The blessing or the reward of those that give to God is one inheritance. What are they inheriting? The kingdom prepared for them. It simply means that when you see a stranger, when you see someone in need and you help that person, it simply means that you are working on your inheritance in heaven. Not made, it is not appointed unto man to bless you, to give you a result for that. Most people give, give. He said that, uh, when, when the, Jesus was trying to tell the, uh, the people, the multitude, he told them that you give like the Pharisees. They will let everybody know that I want to give to this person, you know, he said, let your right hand not know what your left hand is doing. Let me tell you, that person that you gave in secret, the Lord who sees you in secret, is going to see what you do in secret and bless you openly. He said that, come, take your inheritance. Inheritance. Take your inheritance. What did they do? They fed people on the streets. What did they do? They saw someone that is thirsty and they gave the person. What did they do? They gave shout at a stranger, stranded people on the road, on the streets. Something as simple as this gave them inheritance. Young people refuse to give today because they, they have been brainwashed. Young people refuse to give today because. They, 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 they give with the mindset that the Lord is going to bless me tenfold. And when they don't see the blessing forthcoming, ah, they will not give again. <laughs> Your life is a, it should be a practical example of giving because the Lord is there to show you a example to his son. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, let's, you see that even in this world, giving is a godly lifestyle that needs to be embraced by all, all, especially the youth. We might not be talking much about the older ones. Very soon, we will not see them again. But we young ones that are going to stay for long, have more years to spend in this life, it should be, it should be our lifestyle. It should be our lifestyle. We should always be ready to assist someone particularly when we have some spare essex to spare some people we have bags of rice in their house some we have one full bag of uh, one full bag of rice two bags of rice but the neighbor they are trying to beg to get even if it's one cup i'm not asking you to give the person that's the person your rice so but the thing is you should learn to give when you have excess. As youths, we must learn to cultivate the habit of giving because when we start giving at this age, by the time we grow up, we have more resources. It will be difficult for us to give because of by then, it will become a lifestyle. One of the little you earn now or are giving Remember to always pay your tithes. First, give to God. Again, the motive for which you give is important. He said that the first thing is give to God. Like I said when I was starting, give to God your life first. As you are giving, as you are instructed to give man, you have to learn to give God too. Give to God first. Because God gave you first before if even the life you are living to you have today is even God that gave it to you. So you have every obligation to give to God. How are you supposed to give to God? Give your life, then give to God through when through the process of giving to other persons. The motive which we give is important. Do you give because you want to receive? Or you give because it is what, what God wants you to do? And it is your lifestyle as a believer. Shake your motive again. Shake. Why are you giving? Because you want to get. You want. You need. You, you, you need something. Have you? 
Why? Shake your motive again. Food for thoughts. When you can't give out the little you have, ha, you won't give when you have more. <clears throat> who, 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 he, who is faithful with a little, with a little? That should be Matthew chapter Luke chapter six verse ten or Matthew Luke six ten. He who is faithful in little, will be faithful when more is being given to him. If you give out when you have little, ah, we trust God. They are going to give when you have more. Prayer. Lord Jesus. Say after me. Lord Jesus. Help me henceforth. To give willingly. And not grudgingly. Help me henceforth. To give willingly. And not grudgingly. Father we thank you for your word. We thank you for what you have been doing. We thank you for the teaching today. That centered on giving. Father help us. To give willingly and not grudgingly. Help us that we are going to receive every blessing that is important to us in what we give out to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you and see you next time. May God bless you. I hope you are blessed by the word. Join us tomorrow on the Daily Dynamite.